Welcome back to Metropole Business Center and today we're focusing on SME resilience as well as the need to have a disaster and risk management plan. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic accentuated how disasters pose a severe threat to imperative elements of economic sustainability. Businesses that have survived the pandemic so far continue to struggle with its negative impacts, revealing that bus building business resilience to disasters is becoming just as important as managing brand reputation. Now, Invest in Africa, together with its partners, has launched SME programs, webinars, and masterclasses as a means of enhancing resilience of small and medium enterprises to disasters. Joining me to discuss this, as well as an exciting dialogue to take place next week for SMEs, is none other than Wangeshi Moriyuki, Country Manager, Invest in Africa, Kenya. Wangeshi, welcome. Thank you very much, Inid. Perfect. So today on the show, we want to talk about SME resilience. But even as we think of talking about SME resilience, what exactly are we talking about? And even in regards to the COVID-19 pandemic, what are some of the key things that the pandemic has brought to the fore when it comes to small businesses and just being resist, resilient and handling disasters? Mm. Well, um, thank you very much, uh, Ingrid. Uh, and uh, just talking about uh, resilience of business, you know, this, this common yes, you know, and uh, thanks to COVID for exposing us or, or just stimulating our thoughts towards thinking about how we can build uh, resilience. So first of all, you know, resilience is that ability to withstand shocks or to withstand adversity and uh, more so for businesses what we are talking about is the ability of uh, a business to bounce back after a disaster or after the shock of of for instance the pandemic or it could be just anything else so that ability to get up again to get back running or to adapt to these very very tough times is what resilience is now, when we look at uh, small and medium enterprises or small businesses, what this pandemic has really exposed about the resilience of uh, these businesses is how vulnerable they are. They are so, so vulnerable to the shocks of uh, the disaster. And very clearly, we, we see that business businesses small businesses were not prepared for the disaster and, and the reason why i say this is because um, a lot of businesses are no longer sustainable many businesses have been forced to close shop when you go to to town for instance in uh, nairobi city there are buildings that were occupied by very many uh, small businesses shops and all they no longer exist you know so businesses have lost revenues we have cases of businesses that have been auctioned, you know, loss of property, loss of livelihood, and most importantly, is the loss of uh, jobs. So what this just uh, tells us is that small and medium enterprises do not have the capacity to be resilient or to manage these very tough uh, new uh, circumstances or the changes occurring in the environment. And more so, a lot of them still do not even know where they can get support mm -hmm. as they remain um, so, so exposed. So Wangeshi, with that said, and you mentioned that the pandemic has exposed the fact that a lot of small businesses in the country are very vulnerable to shocks. However, uh -huh. Wangeshi, I would ask, even before this pandemic, we saw a situation where businesses in the country, you know, had a short shelf life. You know, either way, we saw a lot of businesses not surviving, uh, you know, beyond a certain period of time from the point of startup. So my question then is, mm -hmm. and for us to get a better understanding of how bad the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic has been, if you just to help us understand with use of maybe statistics, data, how has the pandemic then really, really exposed the resilience in terms of, like you've said, the businesses that have shut down, you know, jobs lost? What mm -hmm. does it look like on the ground? So not even me who's watching away from all oh, they've shut down. How bad is the situation? 
Well, the situation is bad. Now, let me refer to our own experience at Invest in Africa. We have so far conducted three different surveys. And from the first survey conducted in July up to one that we conducted towards the end of the year, we haven't really seen uh, much of uh, change. So first and foremost, by July, we had 28% of businesses shutting down completely, total shutdown. Mm -hmm. All the businesses, more than 98%, were distressed that is small businesses because invest in africa is is focusing on smes you know looking at uh, the percentage of businesses that had to lay off staff i think more than 50 percent of them had to lay off at least one person and others even more than three people to be able to survive so that just tells you that the situation for small and medium enterprises remains the same. They are so, so affected and impacted by the pandemic. And as you mentioned, um, uh, Ingrid, it's not just COVID-19. Mm. Small and medium enterprises have always been vulnerable, and yet they are the key drivers of uh, our e economy. Statistics show that out of 10 businesses, we'll have three of them shutting down, you know. And only one out of three will survive beyond their third birthday. So the pandemic only accentuates that vulnerability or it continues to deepen that um, you know, vulnerability and the, and the lack of capacity, mm -hmm. which just um, you know, points to the fact that SMEs uh, need to, need to be supported, and we need to be thinking about how we can move them from that point of vulnerability to becoming sustainable, to helping them to become you know, resilient and survive for the future. Perfect. Wangeshi, those are mm. damning figures. But even with that said, mm. why would you say now? more than ever it's important for SMEs to even consider just integrating resilience disaster management practices in their businesses and even as we talk about that what's even the true mark of a resilient business what does a resilient business look like and as a business owner what do you need to think about to ensure that even in the long term mm. your your enterprise will mm. be able to withstand shocks unforeseen or even foreseen Yes, thank you, uh, Ingrid. It is so important at this particular time, more than ever, to integrate disaster resilience. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, you know, most businesses are just looking at the pandemic. COVID-19 is a health pandemic that has evolved into an economic, um, you know, an economic problem and a global crisis. But disasters are far reaching we have more disasters covid 19 is just one of them and disasters reverse and decimate decades of hard and um, investments that have been made by these businesses they impact on development they impact on the environment and the aftermath is always that you know livelihoods lives will be lost they'll be destroyed productivity is interrupted there will be debt after the impact but why it is important is because the cost for disaster management far outweighs the cost of disaster prevention, which is why it is so important that businesses look at this not just as a tool that they want to have or a good thing to do, but to have it as part of their strategy, to embed this thinking as a culture. Now, what is the true mark of a resilient um, business a resilient business is one that will endure seasons of change it will endure seasons of adversity and i like giving one example of um, of a business that could be very well known it's now a multinational uh, couple colgate and family were husband and wife you know, started this as a small business, but over decades and decades, we still have Colgate on the shelves. We've still got Colgate in our homes. It's a brand that is top of mind. Mm -hmm. That tells us that this business 
or this organization has remained resilient and what is it that they have done you know that that's a very big company but it started out as a small organization but it it's also a, a test that it is really possible. So I'll just point out to a few things that business owners can do to start um, this journey of uh, integration of uh, disaster resilience. Because it's not, it sounds like a very big word, but it's things that you can, for example, have a business continuity instance, um, wipe away your business. And should that happen, do you have a plan? Simple things like having a succession plan. What happens when the owner of the business dies? You know, have a proper governance. And and when we talk about resilience, besides looking at sustainability, also just look at your operational resilience. What do your business processes look like? You know. Make sure you have strong systems, systems that can be repeated, you know, right. consistently deployed over time. So have a business uh, continuity plan, think about session planning, you know. This is just the pandemic, like I said, mm. but you are of tomorrow's risk. So SMEs also need to start in knowledge in understanding what are now living in the era of climate change. And a lot of businesses think that climate risk or farmers or it people die on weather. But history tells that, for instance, the impact of the law will affect the farms. You know, but what else does it affect hmm. related vaccine activities? We have a lot of things that get affected. We need to invest on each. They are very, very difficult. And this is like one uh, cooker did not just bring things and to have a management uh, for, plan. for instance, business owner, I will hold the knowledge and information about it, that this knowledge is not just sitting with you. Right. You know, have a strategy, for instance, and ensure that your business model is evolving as the environment is changing. Perfect. So we are now forced as no, no, carry on. Small and medium enterprises. Yeah. So we're now forced. Yes, we are now forced to operate in 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 a context of unprecedented change. Yes, and we can't continue to operate in the same way. We need to. To, to do a lot, you know, in terms of uh, just laying that 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 foundation of tomorrow. Wangeshi, I would like to dwell, I'm having a bit of technical difficulties, but I feel like we're getting the general gist of what you're saying. However, I would like to dwell um, a little mm -hmm. bit longer on something that you mentioned where you said, um, right now it's COVID, but, you know, you never mm -hmm. know. And I'll, uh, I'll talk about the fact that now we're in our third wave, right? One year on, we're seeing businesses have somehow managed to adapt and they're mm -hmm. somehow managing to innovate around this pandemic and somehow learn to also operate and somehow get out of the woodworks of this pandemic. Now, what other, even when you're coming out with a risk mitigation plan, what other possible impending disasters, whether big or small, what are we seeing SMEs stare, you know, what are we seeing stare in the face of SMEs that they may not have prepared for? And even when you're thinking, of coming up with a mitigation plan should be should it be for such big disasters like COVID-19 or even what are some of those other small things as an SME that you can overlook that could potentially bring your business to the knees thank you very much in it there are so many different types of disasters and impacts that range across uh, different occurrences beyond um, COVID-19. So I'd initially I talked about climate change, how the weather patterns and those changes that can cause very, very extreme and adverse effects, for instance, uh, flooding. You know, you may not be a farmer, but we have 
seen instances where floods emerge and a whole rooftop you know disappears and and and, and business is affected you know we have had locusts but i want to talk about risks like for instance political risks in kenya we are likely to get um you know a lot of these things happening some dynamics as we head towards uh the politics um 2020 20, next year's uh, general election that you need to think about how that could impact your business as an sme you know while this might be so indirect what are the policies that could change you know what is the impact of business you know shutting down so that's those are the things that small and medium enterprises need to really think about so besides waiting for a major disaster there could be other things in the business environment in the cultural environment it could be technology risk cyber security is a new thing everybody is now operating data who is in business uh, particularly in the urban settings so it's important to track data you know be conversant on the risks of cyber security we sometimes over depend on technology what happens when that technology fails what risks does that technology expose you as a uh, uh, can, can, what are the risks that could you could be exposed to as a result of the use of that um, the use of that technology so so that is what we are talking about uh, ingrid there are so many risks we need to become so aware and that is why as a business you have to invest in knowledge we need to become risk literate anything is a risk just as they say as long as you're a human being you're exposed to anything right. it could be the environment so it's very very important yes we are now on our third wave and we need to learn to adapt and be able to operate within this third wave of the pandemic and not just look at covid covid is actually a slow impending um, a, a rapid impending disaster there are bigger risks the bigger risks are the ones that are slow and onset which you never really think about like climate change perfect now wangeshi mm -hmm. i know uh during and even as right now invest in africa has been very inter integral and at the forefront of just dealing mm -hmm. with smes coming up with practical solutions holding webinars just talk to us about some of the initiatives you've put in place and how have then mm -hmm. how have they then turned into tangible results and solutions to the problems that have been affecting the smes Mm, thank you. Yes, uh, as a, as an organization that uh, is uh, firmly focused on small and medium enterprises, the first uh, initiative we developed as soon as the COVID-19 pandemic set in was an SME toolkit. We developed a, a versatile and comprehensive toolkit of guides um, and, and uh, key business resources to help SMEs access knowledge and information for example how to come up with a risk mitigation plan how to you know how to write a business plan and this was to provide smes with immediate support to help them cope with the impacts and uh, it's also because we are aware that sometimes accessing this knowledge can be expensive for a for a small business so we developed this toolkit it's been rolled out to 5000 smes and it's also available on our uh, biashara academy this toolkit is also developed in collaboration with key partners organizations like Ernst and Young which are global companies providing knowledge and resources to the smes the second thing we did was to roll out a, a covid-19 recovery and uh, resilience program in partnership with the MasterCard Foundation, where we are rolling out or we've been conducting a series of masterclasses, which are conducted by experts to provide SMEs with this knowledge that we're talking about, risk, strategy, thinking future, among others. Now, this is quite a dynamic program that has various components besides the masterclasses um, in that it also has components of coaching so SMEs can join it's absolutely free and uh, they join a coaching circle um, where 
they provide or, or, or they, they can access high touch support and on the coaching we are working in partnership with the coaching hub and the international coaching federation who are uh, certified coaches we are also running an investor readiness program for smes who want to access finance but they may not be ready so here again they get consultancy support to to you know uh, and and access from very experienced uh, organizations like uh, Ernst and Young who look into their books to ensure that they are sitting properly you know they're ready to access this um, this finance so we are talking about different things coaching investor readiness and also mentorship we have a network of business leaders who are willing to offer support to the SMEs. So this is available for SMEs. Any, anybody who is interested can just contact us. We run this program on a weekly basis and we've been able to, to support very many businesses. Actually, in Kenya, we've worked with more than 2,000 SMEs since um, last year. Mm. Amazing. Now, Wangeshi, before mm -hmm. I even let you go, I know you invest in Africa has a webinar next week on Wednesday, 31st March on the theme yes. roadmaps and shock absorbers instituting and mainstreaming SME disaster risk resilience. I would like to hear it from the horse mouth. Talk to us about this webinar as an SME. Why should I why should I even consider attending and what will be the take home? What do you intend to achieve from this third part in the series? I know this is something that's been ongoing, but just help us understand what mm. the intention of the webinar is and why should I even consider it as an SME owner? Thank you. Um, Ingrid, the, the webinar is uh, part of a first uh, dialogue series that we rolled out from last year. And as you, as you mentioned, it's built on, um, on, on, on a framework that already exists in supporting um, SMEs. And as uh, you rightly put it, the theme is, is um, effective response to building back better in recovery, rehabilitation, reconstruction. And this is happening on the 31st of March uh, 2021. That is next week on Wednesday. So why it is so important is because Invest in Africa has engaged partners. We are running this in conjunction with uh, the Ministry of uh, Gender and also with the United Nations um, um, it's called UNDRR, the UN Office for Disaster Risk uh, Resilience. This webinar is so, so important because we have packaged different speakers. We have testimonials on businesses that have been able to overcome COVID-19 and have used, made the best use of the, of the uh, pandemic to build their own resilience. We will be having uh, champions of disaster risk resilience. Uh, one of them is, um, is um, Honorable Rachel Shebesh, who is the Cabinet Administrative uh, Secretary in government. But she will be attending as the, the United Nations champion for disaster risk reduction, among others. There will be a panel of ex experts who will be advising SMEs on practical guides practical ways in which they can be able to um, build resilience. And what we really want is to increase this risk lit lit uh, literacy, visibility, awareness, so that SMEs can move from response to mitigation and management. Perfect. And there you have it. You've now, had again. No, it's sorry, so please important. finish, Wangeshi. I'm sorry, I because got a break, but carry on. After this um, a webinar, invest in Africa to its partners. Strategy. Okay, fine. So I'm going to, to help in invest in Africa together with its partners, draw up a strategy, and develop an SME resilience framework. And this framework covers all components related to risks that could affect SMEs, from developing programs to influencing policy to education and, and, and everything else. So it's so, so important for SMEs to join this webinar, first of all, to connect to knowledge, to connect 
to people, to the right people, to the right internet networks. And we are also going to be providing SMEs with more interest logs onto this um, webinar. Thank you so much, Wangeshi. So if you're an SME owner, you've had it here first. Wednesday, 31st March, Invest in Africa is having a webinar on SME resilience as well as developing a framework on potential risks and how to handle them. And if you're looking into why you should be going, Networks is going to have a very rich panel as well as practical solutions on everything you might have gone through the pandemic and how to get out of it. Unfortunately, that's where I'm going to wrap it up today on uh, Business Center. But thank you very much. You've been amazing for staying with us. Don't go anywhere because when we come back, uh, we're going to bring you Metropole News at 1. Enjoy the rest of our viewing. <laughs>